Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Christopher Ward C60 Anthropocene GMT. This watch is available on pre-order until mid-September on ChristopherWall.com in three versions. On the stainless steel bracelet it is €1,370. On the tied strap you're looking at here it is €1,250. And also on the hybrid rubber strap it is €1,250 respectively. So, firstly let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the C60 Anthropocene GMT comes in a watch box which is protected by this matte black cardboard outer sleeve and as you can see it has the Christopher Ward twin flag emblem embossed on the top. So one removes the sleeve and this is the watch box itself. Now firstly I want to apologise to you because in my previous Christopher Ward reviews I erroneously stated that the tray section of the watch box was made from solid wood and I researched this and I found out I was mistaken and it's not actually made from solid wood as I thought it's made from eco MDF bamboo and cotton so it gives the impression of solid wood but it is in fact more environmentally conscious because eco MDF bamboo and cotton are more sustainable than natural wood and therefore Christopher Ward deserve full credit for using an environmentally conscious um, material for their watch boxes but nonetheless it is highly executed and I like the use of two magnets which attract the sleeve portion and it is a very aesthetically pleasing watch box so one removes the top panel and inside we have a booklet which houses the plastic guarantee card now this is the press release version of the watch if you purchase the C60 Anthropocene GMT it will also come with a very clear and concise owner's instruction manual but this press release version doesn't cover the owner's instruction manual so inside we have the plastic guarantee card and as you can see it says 6060 guarantee so I'll explain what that means the first 60 refers to the 60 day guarantee after purchasing the watch during the first 60 days of ownership if you're unsatisfied with the watch for any reason you can return the watch to Christopher Ward either for a full refund or alternatively a replacement piece the other 60 refers to the 60 month or 5 year guarantee which covers the movement used and in the case of the C60 Anthropocene GMT the movement used is the Solita SW330-2. So very reassuring to get a 5 year guarantee on the movement used in the piece. So with regards to the specification of the piece, this is the C60 Anthropocene GMT. It is a new release for 2021 from Christopher Ward and as I've discussed the C60 Anthropocene GMT is available in three versions on the stainless steel bracelet, the tied strap you're looking at here and also alternatively a hybrid rubber strap. 42mm case diameter, it has a 49.3mm lug to lug measurement, 14.3mm thickness and a lug width of 22 millimeters. The strap is straight, it doesn't taper from 22 millimeters at the lugs down to the buckle and tang. Solid 316L grade stainless steel buckle and tang, nice heavy gauge of metal, and as you can see, signed to a high standard, beautifully engraved with Christopher Ward. I like the heavy gauge of metal, brushed satin finish on the top side, underside, and flanks. And also, with regards to the tied strap, I'll explain who tied are and what they are doing with Christopher Ward. Tide are an organisation and they collect waste plastic material from the oceans. They then process the plastic waste material, they upcycle it into two materials. A yarn material which can be woven into fabric and also they upcycle and process the plastic into plastic granules which can be used for injection moulding. Now I've previously reviewed the C60 Tide edition and in the case back of the C60 Tide there is a plastic ring made from Tide plastic so that has been made from upcycled plastic granules which have then been melted down and injection moulded into a plastic ring so Christopher Ward are working in partnership with Tide and they are making a contribution to the environment um, by reusing upcycled recycled plastic from the ocean and I think they deserve full credit for that so this Tide strap is made from Tide yarn which is made from upcycled plastic so very good to see a brand like Christopher Ward within the mid-tier using environmentally conscious materials 
including the watch box, which as I've stated is made from eco MDF, bamboo and cotton, which is sustainable. And also in the C60 Tide, they use the, um, up the Tide plastic in the ring in the case back. And as you can see, this uses the Tide strap. So very good to see. Now with regards to the rest of the specification, sapphire crystal with clear AR coating and the AR coating does an outstanding job of re reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver applied indices which are symmetrical, the silver hands and of course um, the sapphire crystal which is very shiny and I can say that this is one of the best clear AR coatings I've seen on a watch, they really deserve full credit for not cutting any corners. With regards to the bezel, it's fully loomed ceramic. It's loomed with X1 BLC1 Super Luminova, which is top grade loom. So let's test the bezel action. 120 click unidirectional bezel. Now, I'm going to be critical of this because strictly speaking, this is a GMT complication piece. And really, a GMT complication piece should have a bi-directional bezel rather than a unidirectional bezel as per dive pieces. Yes, the 120 click unidirectional bezel does suffice, it does do the job, but really for a GMT piece it would be more satisfactory if it had a bi-directional bezel that rotates clockwise and anti-clockwise. So let's test the action. No lateral side to side play whatsoever. No back play whatsoever. Good, tight, crisp bezel action. I like the loud, audible clicks of a 120 click ratcheting mechanism. Very well executed. The quality of the finishing of the ceramic is excellent. It is the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing in excess of 5,000 euro. So fully loomed with X1 BLC1 is excellent uh, specification. Let's, let's check the alignment. Perfect. So the orange triangle on the ceramic bezel insert perfectly aligned with the double indices at 12 o'clock. So no lateral side to side play, no back play and perfect alignment. Very well executed bezel. Gear cut profile to the teeth to the bezel rather than coin edge finished. Beautifully mirror polished and also the satin finishing to the inside of the teeth is also finished to perfection. Nice mirror polished chamfer to it as well. So they deserve full credit for a very well executed solid 316L grade stainless steel bezel and a very well executed ceramic bezel insert which is fully loomed. One of my favourite aspects of the C60 Trident series is the light catcher case. As you can see, flawless brush satin finishing to the flanks mirror polished undercut to the case which enhances the comfort and also a large bevel on the top edge of the case which marks the transition between the brush satin finish tops of the lugs and the brush satin finish uh, flanks to the case. I also like the mirror polishing to the crown guards which are integrated nicely with the chamfer on the top edge of the case just beautifully done the bevel is absolutely outstanding this is the kind of case polishing on the light catcher case one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing in excess of 5,000 euro and bear in mind this is only 1,250 euro on the tied strap you're looking at here it's really something Christopher will deserve credit for one of the best finished cases I have seen now with regards to the dial layout this is something I really like the symmetry of the dial Previous versions of the C60 Trident Pro 600 had the date complication framed at 3 o'clock and the Christopher Ward brand logo at 9 o'clock. So it was imbalanced and this was something I drew criticism to in my previous reviews of the C60 Trident Pro 600 for example. I'm really pleased to see Christopher Ward have addressed feedback from collectors that prefer to see symmetry. They like the date complication at 6 rather than 9. The applied indices are perfectly symmetrical and the brand logo at 12 o'clock adds to the symmetry and they have got it correct. I really like this symmetrical dial layout. The legibility is outstanding, it's functional and it's not over branded with text or specification, just the right amount of information. As you can see, the GMT hour hand is also clearly legible because it is finished with orange and black. I like the orange hour hand, uh, orange GMT hour hand, which is fully loomed at the tip, and one can clearly differentiate between the orange GMT hour hand and the 12 hour head hour hand. So it's very well executed, well designed, and the counterbalance on the sweeping second hand has the Trident spearhead, and that is a feature of the Trident series. So they've still maintained the Trident Pro 600. Um, design aspects incorporated into this C60 Anthropocene GMT. So let's test the crown action. 
Nailed solid 316L grade stainless steel crown. Signed with the Christopher Ward uh, twin flag emblem, as you can see, mirror polished. The background is B blasted matte effect. Done to a high standard. Let's test the action. Absolutely silky smooth Rolex quality. Minimal resistance required to unscrew it. Silky smooth thread interfa interface between the internal thread of the solid stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. One of the best crown actions I've experienced on a watch, irrespective of the price point, it really is Rolex level quality. In the first position, it's the manual wind position, and one can manually wind the movement, the Salita SW330-2, to its maximum 56 hour power reserve. Now this is something to note. The previous version movement used was the Salita SW330-1, and the 330-1 has a 42 hour power reserve, but this is superior. It is the successor to that movement. The SW330-2 has a higher power reserve. It's not 42 hours, it is 56. And that is a notable upgrade, and Christopher will deserve full credit for not using the older version, the SW330-1. They have used the latest version, SW330-2. So 56 hours is a very impressive power reserve at this price point. One can manually wind it to maximum 56 hours. Pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication position. Rotating the crown anti-clockwise, if you look closely at the date complication, you can see the quick set complication works as one would expect. Rotating the crown clockwise in the quick set date complication position is the quick set GMT hour hand complication position as you can see. And one thing I really like, it's a characteristic of the SW330-2. The GMT hour hand has a quick set complication and the hours are indexed with positive clicks. So one can either set the GMT time by rotating the bezel anti-clockwise or alternatively one can use the quick set complication as you can see to rotate the GMT hour hand independently and every hour has got a good positive click. And I love that indexing of each hour on the GMT hour hand. It makes setting the time to the GMT hour hand very easy, very satisfying. So the SW330-2 is a reliable, well-proven Swiss movement and the correct choice for a GMT piece. So I really like the reliability of it, the build quality, the quality control, and also the accuracy, as well as the 56 hour power reserve, which is an enhancement over the 42 hours of its predecessor. So let's test the screw down crown. Absolutely silky smooth. Immediate pickup on the internal thread of the screw down crown and the external thread of the crown tube. One of the best executed crowns I have experienced. Absolute pleasure to use it and Christopher Ward deserve full credit for it. The crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 600 meters. Now I want you to consider this. The Rolex GMT Master 2 only has 100 meters of water resistance. This has 600 meters, six times the water resistance of a GMT Master 2. Double the water resistance of a Rolex Submariner date at 300 meters. To get a GMT function piece with 600 meters of water resistance at this price point of only 1,250 euro is incredible value and Christopher Ward deserve full credit for that high specification. Now, although it's 600 meters water resistant, it is only 14.3 millimeters thick, and that is something to bear in mind. Often with 600 meter water resistant dive pieces, they have to have a very thick sapphire crystal and a very thick uh, screw down stainless steel case back in order to withstand 600 meters of pressure. So really to get a 600 meter water resistant piece with a sapphire crystal and a solid stainless steel case back down to only 14.3 millimeters is very imp impressive itself. But what's also very impressive is that this isn't a dive piece, this is a GMT piece and usually with GMT uh, complication movements they have to be very thick. The case has to be thicker than a dive piece in order to house the GMT movement because they are thicker than a standard automatic movement. So the SW330-2 is a thick GMT movement, but they have still managed to get the overall thickness down to only 14.3 millimeters. So not only is it impressive that it's 600 meters water resistant, it's also impressive that it's a GMT complication piece and it is only 14.3. So very impressive. Now with regards to the case back, as you can see, very well executed. Bus satin finish to the center section is like a bead blasted matte effect, mirror polish to the embossed trident spear. 
and beautifully embossed with Christopher Ward Trident Pro 600, engraved with the specifications for high standard, concentric brass satin finishing to the exterior, and the circumference is mirror polished to a flawless finish. I like the large milled slots in the case back, and as discussed, the solid stainless steel screw down case back provides an effective hermetic seal to 600 meters, as does the screw down crown. So let's have a look at the underside of this tied strap. So it's a thick material. Now the tied uh, yarn is woven into this material as you can see and it's like a seat belt weave and one thing I like about it is they've welded the end of the strap so it's not going to fray like a low quality NATO strap. It is stiffer than a NATO strap. It's thicker and therefore it's going to be more durable. It's not going to fray around the holes as per the usual problem with NATO straps. It feels more like a leather or rubber strap in terms of its resistance. It's thick but once broken in it's going to be incredibly comfortable. I like the thick uh, woven yarn material going to last for a good length of time well reinforced around the spring bar and one thing I like about the underside of the tied strap is they use quick release stainless steel spring bars so one doesn't need a spring bar tool in order to remove the strap and change it for a bracelet for example I like the use of quick release spring bars and also the bracelet has two quick release levers so one doesn't need to use a spring bar to remove the bracelet version very well executed I'm very impressed with the quality of this tied strap and of course it is environmentally conscious because it's made from that recycled yarn material two sliding keepers finished to a good standard and as I've discussed nice heavy gauge of metal to the buckle and tang so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now minor criticism, the strap is a fraction too short for my 8 inch wrist. Now if you have a 6 to 7 inch wrist this will fit you to perfection, no worries whatsoever with the length of the strap. But however if you're a collector like myself with a larger wrist of 8 inches, if you have a 7 to 8 inch wrist you may find the strap to be a fraction too short to engage the end of the strap in the two sliding keepers. But for the majority of collectors it's going to be perfectly adequate as 6 to 7 inches is the most common wrist size. Now I want to give due credit to Christopher Ward because the light catcher case is a personal favourite of mine in 42mm. As you can see it fits my 8 inch wrist to perfection. Nice snug fit to the wrist, good curved profile to the underside of the lugs. I like the light catches undercut to the case which means it's very comfortable because when one flexes the wrist, when one bends the hand back, the undercut on either side of the case means that it doesn't dig into the wrist. It's a very comfortable piece to wear for long periods of time such as 8 to 12 hours per day. Now 49.3mm lug to lug measurement gives a very good fit for a 7 to 8 inch wrist. I would say to you if you're a collector with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches I highly recommend you purchase the piece on either the hybrid rubber strap or the tied strap you're looking at here because it will significantly reduce the heft of the piece. This only weighs 108 grams on the tied strap. Now the bracelet version will weigh in excess of 150 grams, so significantly more because it's 22mm lug width. But having said that, if you're a collector with a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches, I highly recommend the bracelet version because the 22mm bracelet will perfectly balance the 42mm head of the piece. I've previously reviewed the C60 Tied Edition and that was on the bracelet and I can tell you that the ratcheting mechanism in the bracelet is outstanding and also the taper of the bracelet is outstanding used on the C60 42mm. So larger wrist I would buy it on the bracelet, smaller wrist I would advise you buy it on this tied strap or alternatively the hybrid rubber strap if that's more to your personal taste. As you can see feel good factor is excellent, the piece is very aesthetically pleasing, I love the clear AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal. I also really like the dial. Now I want to talk about this specifically because it's one of my favourite aspects of the C60 Anthropocene GMT. The dial was inspired by Arctic ice and it replicates that because it's actually translucent rather than being opaque. If you look closely at the translucent dial which is made from sapphire and then lacquered you can actually see the date wheel underneath it showing through. So it's not transparent, it's not see-through as per the C60 Sapphire which I've previously reviewed. It's translucent, it allows light through but you can't actually see through it with perfect clarity like translucent Sapphire. And I really like it, it does look like Arctic ice. It really complements the silver applied indices and also the handset. It's a very well executed dial. 
Now, with regards to the sapphire, it's lacquered and it does look very aesthetically pleasing, but there is something I dislike about it and I want to be critical about. If you look closely at the 9 o'clock position and look closely at the 3 o'clock position, you will see two pairs of screws. They're flathead screws and the purpose of the screws are to screw the sapphire uh, dial down to the bridges of the movement, the SW330-2. Now, good method because the two pairs of screws do a good job of securing the dial in position with perfect alignment. And um, of course, it makes sense because one can drill holes in the sapphire and then screw it down to the uh, movement. It's not going to move out of position. But however, it's not aesthetically pleasing because these screws are black. I think Christopher Ward should have used white screws, which would have blended with the uh, sapphire dial. Um, and being less um, blatant. Now, the problem with the black screws is they just don't match the applied indices and really it's a disappointment. I have suggested to Christopher Ward a way to rectify this um, problem. I think that they should have bonded the sapphire uh, dial to the bridge of the movement. Now, I'll explain what I mean by bonded. For example, they could use 3M adhesive rings. So if you look at this ceramic bezel insert, the common method of um, adhering a ceramic bezel to the uh, stainless steel bezel itself is by using a 3M adhesive ring. It's like double-sided tape. And they could use the same material, 3M adhesive, to bond the sapphire dial to the bridge of the movement. Now, it would still retain its translucent property. Uh, it would look better than using dial dots. Often watch modders use dial dots to stick dials down to movements when the dial feet don't align with the holes in the bridges of the movement. But the disadvantage of using dial dots with a translucent dial like this sapphire dial is one can see the dial dots because it lets the translucent um, the translucence lets you see the dial dots as per the date wheel you can just see. So I've suggested to Chris Ward, don't use dial dots, but use 3M adhesive. If they use a disc of 3M adhesive, that would adhere the um, sapphire to the bridge of the movement, and that would negate the need for these four screws, the two pairs, two at nine, two at six, because they really do look abhorrent. So that's my criticism, but it is a beautiful dial, and I think there is room for improvement. Alternatively, they could simply use white screws, which would look less obvious. Now, with regards to the movements, uh, I'll discuss that because that's another favourite aspect of the piece. It uses the Solita SW330-2, and as I've discussed, that is the successor to the SW330-1. So the most notable upgrade is the 56-hour power reserve versus its predecessor with a 42-hour power reserve. 25 joules, it has hand winding and hacking, which is useful complications, GMT complication. It, has 20, it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. And as you'll know from my previous reviews, I like 4 hertz movements. Smooth sweep to the second hand due to the 4 hertz frequency. The other benefit of running at 28,800 vibrations per hour is it is the perfect compromise between power reserve and accuracy. So it gives a good balance. With movements that run at 3 hertz and 21,600 vibrations per hour, such as Seiko movements, the second hand judders or stutters around the dial. It doesn't sweep as smoothly as a 4 hertz movement. So I think the correct choice is the SW330 2, and I like the fact it's a 4 hertz movement because of that balance between power reserve and accuracy. Now, the stated accuracy is plus or minus 20 seconds per day. So a rather wide accuracy range for the SW330-2, but however, I'm pleased to report that Christopher Ward are regulating the movements they're using to a very high standard. This one is running consistently at plus 5 seconds per day, which is actually within cost chronometer limits. Cost chronometer limits are minus 4 to plus 6 per day, so at plus 5 it's well within cost chronometer limits. And it's very good, bearing in mind the price point, this is €1,250, so one is getting a 56-hour power reserve GMT complication piece regulated to 5 seconds per day within cost chronometer limits. That is outstanding specification. So let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to its absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. Now I've got high expectations of this piece because it uses X1 BLC1 Superluminova, which really is top grade Superluminova, equal in quality to the very best, which is Swiss BGW9 Superluminova, which you'll know from my previous reviews is a personal favourite. 
Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is 10 out of 10 Super Luminova performance. I really regard it to be equal in quality to Swiss BGW9 Super Luminova. Similar blue tone to BGW9, but the X1 BLC1 has a whiter tone. The C1 gives it its white tone, and I think it's the correct choice. I think Christopher Ward deserves full credit for not cutting any corners with regards to the quality of the loom. The X1 BLC1 is equal in quality to Rolex Chrome Light or alternatively Seiko Loom Bright or Swiss BGW9, for example. So as you can see, the ceramic bezel insert is fully loomed. Even the orange triangle on the ceramic bezel insert is fully loomed with X1 BLC1. The Arabic numerals are clearly legible, as are the symmetrical applied indices. The orientation is also excellent with the double applied indices at 12 o'clock. And one can clearly differentiate between the orange GMT hour hand and the 12 hour hand because they have different size triangle tips. So I like the sweeping second hand. It has a, a loom dot. Uh, so it's clearly legible and I think they've made the correct decision by moving the date complication from 3 o'clock to 6 because that enhances the symmetry of the applied indices. So it's glowing brightly and it's continuing to glow for a good length of time. It really is 10 out of 10 performance and I'm pleased to see they haven't cut any corners. So lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So €1,250 Euro on this tied strap. Yes, it is unquestionably excellent quality and yes, it is unquestionably excellent value. The specification is absolutely loaded. The correct price for this piece would be double its retail price. If this piece were €2,500, it would still be excellent quality and excellent value. Well, it's not going to get a GMT complication piece using the SW330-2 with 56-hour power reserve, regulated to 5 seconds per day. And the rest of the specification is also loaded. X1 BLC1 Super Luminova, which as I've demonstrated, is top grade. Clear AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal, and most notably 600 meters of water resistance, and it is only 14.3 millimeters thick. Outstanding throughout. The build quality, the quality control, and the case finishing and the bezel finishing throughout are just incredible. As I've detailed, this is the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing in excess of €5,000. So really, what one is getting with this is a €2,500 piece for €1,250. It's like buying a watch 50% off. And I really think that Christopher Ward, the C60 series, does present outstanding value at the price point it cannot be beaten so quality swiss made piece with a quality swiss made movement the sw330-2 with 56 hours is the correct choice it's one of my favorite gmt complication movements and it is a very good movement in itself so i'm going to highly recommend it so i'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money now you might think well how can he say champagne watch for lemonade money when it's 1250 euro you're going to say well that isn't lemonade money is it but this is a mid-tier piece worth two and a half thousand and you're getting it for 1250 so yes you are getting champagne specification for lemonade money you're not going to get this loaded specification for anything like 1250 with any other brand so yes it is a champagne watch for lemonade money and i'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration i hope you've liked my review of the Christopher Ward Anthropocene GMT. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.